the once fantastic Bruce Willis is at it again. Got another Bruce Willis movie review for you. This film's called A Day to Die. Let's talk about this movie. Yeah, so A Day to Die has just dropped. Not to be mistaken with A Good Day to Die Hard. Although that was bad enough in itself. Yeah, so Bruce Willis is at it again with this film. Now, interestingly, 11 days ago, I watched and reviewed another film starring the fantastic Bruce Willis. He's doing all these movies. I mean, these movies are coming out of nowhere. He must be making these in his sleep, which is quite apt considering he seems to be sleepwalking through every role that he does now but is this film any different does this film get bruce willis out of his rut and give him something interesting to do so let's find out my thoughts on this film um now this film is rated r um, in the United States. It runs for one hour and 45 minutes and is directed by um, a fellow called Wes Miller who has directed some stuff previously but nothing of any real significance from my perspective. Um, although he hasn't worked with Bruce Willis before um, which is probably a good thing because Bruce Willis has recently been making a lot of films with the same director, um, a lot of his recent previous ones. Now, as well as Bruce Willis, the film also stars Frank Grillo. Frank Grillo has starred with Bruce Willis before in a couple of projects, one or two, I can't remember how many, but they have been on screen together. And the film also stars Kevin Dillon. Now, Kevin Dillon is the primary focus of the movie. Frank Grillo is in a support role, quite a large support role. And then you've got Bruce Willis there as well for proceedings um, and a actor called Leon uh, as a character called Patisse. Now, Leon, I, it's one name, like Madonna. Um, I don't know who Leon is. It, it, I've got no idea who he is as an actor. Let's talk about the story for this movie. After killing a drug syndicate member while protecting a par parolee, Connor Connolly, played by Kevin Dillon, has one day to pay $2 million in reparations he doesn't have to to Tyrone Patisse, played by Leon. Um, he is forced to ask his old military ops crew, led by Bryce Mason, who's obviously played by Frank Grillo, um, to come together and somehow get $2 million before Connor loses everyone he loves. That's the basic premise for the film. So the film does start with this sort of hostage situation um, going on where this team, Frank Grillo's team, goes in and sort of saves the day. They're sort of like a off-the-record black ops team um, doing everything under the American flag and this sort of thing, working for Bruce Willis, who's like a police captain. Now, yeah, and then the other stuff sort of comes into play after that, which I've already just gone into. Now, there's a lot of back and forth in this film as to who's bad, who's good, who's not, who is. Um, I won't go too much into the story because, I'll be honest with you, I struggled. I struggled with this film. Yeah, the... It, it was... Oh, it was a very, very mixed bag, right, this film. Um... On the one hand, obviously, it's a very cheap film. It is, it is cheap, and it is most noticeably in some of the effects um, department. Um, there's a helicopter crash towards the start of the film, which looks incredibly poor. The flames, the explosion, the wreckage of the helicopter. Um, there's back projections and front projection in cars in this film and I haven't seen the likes of this for probably about 20 years in movies I mean the projection work is awful when when they're in vehicles it is really that bad um, there's other elements where cars have exploded towards the end of the film and the CGI flames are, are, are poor again um, again you know I haven't seen CGI flames this bad again in, in probably a couple of decades and the muzzle flashes on the guns it's just awful and, and uh, when sometimes when people get shot 
the blood looks black and then other times it looks like ketchup it's it's all over the show in that respect now um the film itself i think that the direction of the film i think the director was miller has got potential um i think he's got potential if he had a bigger budget um had a lot more confidence as a director um he might be able to produce something worthwhile um frank grillo within the film he's fine he's he frank grillo needs he needs better he needs to step away from these cheaper type of films and actually get some good films because frank grillo's got got a decent performance he's got a decent on-screen presence a decent persona there Kevin Dillon is not particularly likeable in the film. And like I said, Bruce Willis just tends to sleepwalk his whole way through. Although he does have a little bit more to do in this film than what he does in, in some others that I've seen him in. Um, he is involved in the action at the end. He is... Uh, um, he, he's a character who... You're not sure of his agenda throughout um, and where his loyalty lies and this sort of a thing and obviously um spoiler alert here he does turn out to be one of the primary villains of the piece um patisse who is a villain within the film within the context of the film but he's got uh, even though he kills but he's had someone killed and that um and he threatens people he's got good morality within him and he ends up being one of the sort of um, redeeming characters within the film by the end of it so what I'm saying is is that you've got these characters that go on these journeys of of are they good are they bad but this poses a, a problem with the watching of the film with in the because these characters are all on this sort of dark path are all are all sort of shades of gray you've got no one that you can really root for or really care for within the movie um, I found I mean, I, I watched the film from beginning to end. I did sit through it, hour and 45 minutes of it. I was hoping it would just be 90 minutes when I looked at the runtime. Um, so I thought it was going to be one of those sort of short, cheaper films in that sense. Um, but I did struggle following it because I was so uninvested in the story, in what was going on and with the characters within the story. The film didn't really seem to have a point. Now, I know that's a very strange thing to say because you could probably argue that about most films. But they don't have a point. What is the point of this film? But this film just didn't seem to have a point. It's just sort of like events occurring and stuff happening to get us through the film to the end um like i said there was a lot of twists and turns with people and what they were up to and this sort of a thing but but yeah it was it was it it isn't a good film let me put it that way it's not a good film but i can see potential within the director like i said now um the soundtrack for the film um i think his name is leon kosh I may be wrong. I think his surname is definitely Kosh. First name, I think, is Leon. Um, he's done nothing of any significance prior to this movie. Um, and to be honest, his soundtrack is completely forgettable. There's there's nothing within the film that is, is uh, of any great significance um, in that sense. The, the cinematography of the film, there was bits where I, I could see, again, I could see some sort of... A, a Decent work was done or trying to be done, um, but then other parts it was pretty lazy and pretty substandard. It's, it's a film of two halves in that sense. Now Bruce Willis again, he's just there to to pop up this film with a with a brand name, and 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 that's all he's there for essentially. He's you know a lot of it is Bruce Willis sitting around doing very little. You know he. Yeah, delivering his lines, and sometimes he pulls these facial expressions within this film that are just comedy. They they just look so stupid. Um, Frank Grillo, his ending within the film is laughable. It, it, it's just so so again so silly um, that he's speeding this car and, and he's getting shot at, and then the car is just slowing down and comes to it comes to a slow halt. 
like literally inches from Bruce Willis and you're thinking okay he's gonna run Bruce Willis down at least but that doesn't happen and it, it stops right at like Bruce Willis's legs this car and and all the time he's getting riddled with bullets and it just looks so stupid it really does look stupid so all in all this is again a, a, a poor poor film it is a really poor film um, I do feel sorry for the director I'm sure that he put his heart and soul into this movie because like I said he, I think that with a bigger budget um, and maybe a bit more confidence this director could actually be half decent um, that's the impression I get from this film. But he's, 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 he's limited by the budget. He's obviously having to rely on these brand name actors to prop this film up. Um, I think the only person who comes out of this film with any dignity really is Frank Grillo. Um, he's okay within the film. He's enjoyable to watch like he is in most films. He sort of delivers. But beyond that, there's nothing of any real worth within this movie to watch. It didn't really interest me. It didn't pique my interest as I was watching it. And, and I did find myself struggling with what was going on. It wasn't until that point where I realized that this film doesn't actually have a point. Point to, to make is when I realized that this is why I was struggling with the movie. Anyway, so that's it. Just my thoughts on this movie. Um, a, a day to die. <sighs> Not a good day to watch this film. Not a good day to die. Um, I don't know, anyway. Um, just ironic that Bruce Willis is in two films with a very similar title now. I wonder if he knew that was going to be the title when he was actually filming it. Anyway, this is AJ. Thank you for watching. Um, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leave me a comment down below, hitting the notification bell and all those sort of things. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care all and goodbye.